God is waiting on the warrior in us to prepare to die. God is waiting on the warrior in you. God is waiting on the warrior in me to prepare to die. I, I know that sounds strange to say, but it's, it's fact. It's truth. There's topics in our society that people are very uncomfortable talking about, like death and taxes, a lot of times religion and politics. But these are things we need to talk about. We don't need to avoid them. Yes, they're going to open up intense dialogue sometimes, but that's what's needed to get truth out there. Preparing to die is a scary thing if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know what's out there, if you don't know what to expect. That's why the five most important questions in the world are, where did you come from? Who are you? What are you worth? What is your purpose here on earth? And where are you going when you die? You know, I can't answer those for you. I can only answer them for me. But as I answer them for me, I hope it, that it will bless you. Where did I come from? Well, let me tell you where I didn't come from. I didn't come from some cosmic explosion that happened billions of years ago out in outer space, from some soupy substance evolving into a tadpole, into a monkey, into a man. No, no. I was created by the creator of the universe, who spoke the universe into existence, who created me in his own image. That's where I came from. Who am I? Well, I'm Chad. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a daddy. I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a friend, uh, I'm a counselor, um, I'm, a, I'm a, an actor, a producer, a director, um, you, know, a, a, you know, a chaplain, a biker chaplain. I, I, sure, all, all those things sound great, don't they? No, that's not who I really am. See, who I really am is a child of God, who I really am is a disciple of Christ, who I really am is a soldier in the army of God. Who I really am is a, is a priest through Christ, an ambassador through Christ, royalty through Christ, a friend of God. That's who I am. What am I worth? Well, I'm priceless. I don't mean that pridefully. I mean that to be true. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He died for me. That makes me priceless. What is my purpose here on earth? Well, it's to, to love God and love others. It's to spread the good news. It's to do the Great Commission, exactly what he said. To use the gifts and talents he's given me for his glory and his kingdom purpose. To just make a difference on this planet. And where am I going when I die? I'm going to heaven. I don't have an ounce of doubt. I'm going to heaven. Am I going because I'm a good person? No way. Isaiah makes it really clear that our righteousness is filthy rags to God. I'm not going because I'm a good person because I'm not a good person. I sin every day. I'm not a good person. Jesus said, why do you call me good? Only the Father in heaven is good. So, no, I'm not, I'm not going to heaven because I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven because Jesus told me if I will believe in him, that I, I will not perish but have, ever, but have everlasting life, eternal life. I'm going to heaven because God has, has given me a redemption plan. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For, for God did not, for Christ did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. John 3, 16 and 17. So I'm going to heaven because Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Period. That's it. Nothing that I did. No steps after that. No, no. That, that's, that would give me glory. All glory goes to Jesus. God is waiting on the warrior in us to prepare to die. So that we will we will be able to know about heaven and hell. And if we don't prepare for death, then we're not going to think about heaven. We're not going to think about hell. We're not going to weigh the consequences. We're not going to look at what happens after you know, this body decays. One of my um, favorite stories in the Bible, and when I say favorite, I mean it's, it brings me comfort. And I have watched it bring a lot of people comfort at the counseling center. You know, running, running a counseling center, dealing with crises can be overwhelming. And I, I, I have to spend a lot of time in prayer and in the Word to be able to just keep going. Um, years ago, I was a secular counselor, secular therapist, and it about killed me because I relied on my own strength and I relied on 
psychology, and that can only get you so far, and then and then you're you're whooped, you're you're fried, you're broken. And God had to let me go through that brokenness to teach me that I have to fully rely on Him if I'm going to be able to help others. But in 2 Samuel chapter 12, um, we see in, 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 in verse 23 that David had went through a situation where his baby was sick. And David's baby um, needed a miracle. And David was... He ripped his clothes, he threw dirt and ashes on himself, he fasted, he prayed, he cried out to God for healing of his child, but his, his child died. Afterwards, he went and he bathed, and he put on clean clothes, and he ate, and he rested. And the people around him were confused, because the, the, the difference in his, his emotions, it, it, it shocked them. And finally, they, they asked him, and... Um, he makes this profound statement. He makes a statement that I want to bless you. He says, I cannot bring my child back to me, but I can go to my child. Mm. I cannot bring my child back to me, but I can go to my child. He knew his child was in heaven, and he knew one day he would see his child again, and he rested in that. The Apostle Paul says, for him to live is Christ, but to die is gain. What does he mean by that? He means to live is Christ, it means to serve, to even suffer. But to live means that if I'm going to live, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. That's, if I'm going to live, that's what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, he says in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, he says, my life is meaningless and worthless if I'm not fulfilling the mission that Christ Jesus has given me. The mission of telling the world the good news about Jesus Christ and about the grace of God. So that's what he lived for. And when it was his time to go, he was ready. He was excited. He was ready to go. You know, when you take the word heaven, H-E-A-V-E-N, and you make it into an acrostic, you know, the, the letter H stands for uh, heaven is the finish line. Heaven is the finish line. You know, the, the letter E in the word heaven, it stands for everyone has a purpose. You know, a lot of, a lot of times um, people think, well, you know, they, they don't focus on heaven because they don't feel like they have a purpose here on this earth. But we do. We all have a purpose. We all have spiritual gifts. Um, we, all, we all have a reason for, for being here. You know, one of, the, one of the passages that I want to read to you right now is, is really dear to my heart because as I counsel a lot of people who, who question their, their loved ones passing, you know, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you an example um, I was counseling a family recently, and, the, and their family member had, had died in a car wreck, and they had died because they were actually had, had intoxicated, and the people in the car were, had been doing drugs and alcohol, and they, they wrecked and died. And here I am trying to counsel this poor family that's grieving, and, they, and they, they're already grieving the death, but they're also grieving how their child died. And in the midst of that, I, I, hear, them, I hear them questioning, you know, his, his eternal salvation, and... and and I knew the family a little bit um, before they had come to counseling. I just knew where they went to church, and I, and I, knew, I knew their pastor. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you questioning their salvation? And, and, he, and the family said, yes. And I said, why? And, and the family said, well, because the, he died, you know, intoxicated. He, he died doing, he died sinning. And I said, well, if that's the reason that he's go, not going to heaven, then I'm not going to go to heaven. And they, they were confused. And I said, well, well, I said, the day I die, I will have sinned. I said, I don't doubt that for a second. I'll have either thought something I shouldn't have thought. I'll either said something I shouldn't have said. I'll either did something I shouldn't have did or not done something I was supposed to do. But I, I, will, have, I will have sinned the day I died. So if that's the reason he's not in heaven, then we're all in trouble. And the family, the family just looked at me just shocked that I said that. And I said, I said when he was younger... I said, had, had he ever accepted Christ into his heart? Had he, had he ever asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior? And, and they were like, yeah, when he was younger, but he had fallen away. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, now you're, now you're calling God a liar. And the family was like, whoa, what are you talking about? And, and listen, if I wouldn't have felt the, the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the passion of the Lord within me, I'd have never talked to this precious family like this. But I knew that I had to talk to them like this because they were, they were buying into a deception of the powers of darkness. They were doubting the word of God. 
And every day Satan's goal is to get us to doubt the word of God. That's what he did to Eve in the garden. That's what he he's did all through the Bible. That's what he does every day in believers' lives is to get us to doubt the word of God. And then all these people out here that believe in all these other religions and all these political people that, that bash Christianity and bash the Bible, they're trying to get you to doubt the Word of God. And you have to boldly stand on the Word. Don't, don't be bold in yourself. Don't be bold in yourself because we're, we're, we're scum. We're sinners. So to, to be bold in us, they, they're just going to keep throwing their, your own personal dirt in your face. People can throw dirt in my face all day long. I know my junk. I know my past. I, I know that stuff. But what... But what I also know is God's word and that God loves us and that Jesus loves us. And if God speaks something, it's a promise. He, 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 and he is not a liar. And he says, in, and he says this in Romans chapter 10. He says in Romans chapter 10 verses, verse, verses 9 through 13. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that, that it's, you shall be saved. For, for with, the, with the, the mouth we confess and with the heart we believe and all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jews and Gentiles are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture says how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. It's so important that we share the word so that people will know about heaven. Heaven is, heaven is, is real. This family, when I was able to share with them that the word of God, and I said in there, I said, do you see in parentheses that, okay, you're saved unless you sin that day? You're saved unless you die in a car wreck? Car wreck? Uh, in the midst of sin? No. You, Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says that, that, um, that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but, but that it says we have, a, we have the spirit of God now that because we have you know, accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior and, the, and that through Christ we have been adopted and we can call God Abba Father. When, when you've been adopted by God, it's, it's, it's final. He, he, he has given you a gift. He's not going to take it back. He, you are his child, and he loves you. I have four children. I would not denounce them as my children no matter what. They are my children. Nothing will change that. I love them unconditionally. Once you give your heart to Christ, I don't want you to fall away. I have fallen away. I know what it's like to fall away. It hurts God, and it hurts other people, and it hurts yourself. But just because you fall away doesn't mean that you're no longer saved. When I shared that with the family, their tears turned to joy because they realized they had been deceived, that they had started doubting the Word of God and, and, and believing that, that one of their precious family members was in hell. And he's not. He's not in hell. And, and, and you know, the importance of talking about heaven is, it, it, it's, it's so huge because, you know, you know if, if I tell my kids, you know, we're going to, to the beach or we're going to Disney World or we're going somewhere and they don't they don't know and they don't know where we're going. I, I need to give them kind of a picture of it. I need to give them details. I need to tell them what it's going to be like. And then there's excitement. Well, well people have heard about heaven, but most people don't know about heaven. Most people don't know that there's going to be food in heaven. Most people don't know they're going to recognize their loved ones in heaven. Most people don't know that there's going to be animals in heaven. Most people don't know that, you know, that, that you're not just going to sit around and, 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 and play a harp and have little angel wings on. That's, that's not what heaven is going to be like for us. It's so much more than that. There's even going to be a new earth. God's going to take this planet and redeem this planet back to the Garden of Eden. We're going to get to experience the way that He intended for us to experience it. The letter A in the word heaven, in the acrostic heaven, H-E-A-V-E-N, the A stands for are you ready? You know, are you ready? You know, have you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Are you prepared to die? Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? If he's not, I beg you, I beg you to ask him to be your Lord and Savior. The letter V in the word heaven stands for victory it only through Jesus. Not through any good thing you do, not through any great thing you do. It, it is, heaven comes only through Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. The letter E in the word heaven, I said it, it stands for enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey of life. Enjoy the journey of life. 
There's, there's laugh, play, be silly, love, serve, enjoy this life. Enjoy this life. But make a difference while you're enjoying this life. And you will find that the more that you're doing for the Lord, the more you enjoy life. It's not about being busy. It's not about performing in a checklist. But it's about just making it part of who you are, your lifestyle. Serving the Lord is, is just your life. You know, talking about Him, that's what you do. And, and living for Him and basing your decisions. And you'll find that you enjoy life so much more. So, a lot less regrets. You know, I look at the old lifestyle of mine when I had tons of regrets when I was living for me. And uh, the new lifestyle, you know, being a disciple of Christ and, and trying to base, you know, I mess up every day, but trying to base my decisions on Him. And the letter N in the word heaven, I said, stands for never say goodbye. Never say goodbye. I've got four children. I've got four children. And whenever I leave to go to work or go somewhere, sometimes they'll say, goodbye, Daddy. And I'll say to them, never, never say goodbye. I always say, see you later. See you later. God is waiting on the warrior and us to prepare to die. Death is, uh, I want to live as long as I can so I can raise my children and tell people about Jesus. But I also always want to be prepared to die. Say what you need to say to your loved ones and your friends. Make right anybody that you need to ask for forgiveness. Let go of grudges that you have in your life. You know? Say what you need to say to your loved ones before you pass. And if, if you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, make that right this very day. Let me pray for you right now. Father God, I pray that for anybody that hears these words that they will prepare to die and that they will prepare by, by living their life each day as if it were their last and making a difference on this planet for your glory. Father, we love you. We praise you. I thank you for your holy word that gives us strength and comfort in the midst of so many hard things we go through, Lord. But, Lord, your word is so clear. Jesus, the 40 days, the last 40 days he was here on this planet before he ascended into heaven, all he focused on was heaven. That one topic. And, oh, it just lit a fire in the believers. Father, I pray that you will help us to set our mind on heaven every day. Give us the strength to do it, Lord, because we sure do get distracted. And it's in Christ's holy name that I do pray and praise. Amen.